Welcome to USA Hockey's major rule changes of the 2021-2025 rulebook. The points of emphasis that we will touch in this video include fair play and respect, abuse of officials, intimidation tactics, competitive contact, body checking, focus on possession of the puck, players, respect and development of skills, coaches, safe and sportsmanlike environment, officials, enforce all rules of integrity, and lastly, spectators, respect and support for all participants. Let's start with the Declaration of Player Safety, Fair Play, and Respect. Many principles from the Declaration of Player Safety have been incorporated into the rules. Body contact is now known as competitive contact. Glossary definitions have been added for angling, collision, late body check, physical engagement, and vulnerable or defenseless. Let's go over the language added to Rule 601, B.5. Banging the boards with a stick or other object, including skates or arms, after a body check regardless as to whether the check is being penalized. This is deemed to be in sportsmanlike conduct and should be penalized when done as a means of escalating dangerous and or unnecessary physical play where there is no intent to legally gain possession of the puck. Specific language from the Declaration of Player Safety has been added to the following rules. Boarding body checking, charging, checking from behind, head contact, and roughing. Specific situations add to Rule 640 unnecessary roughness. Roughing. A player who has released a shot or pass is no longer considered to be in control of the puck. They are considered to be vulnerable or defenseless and are no longer eligible to be body checked. A minor penalty shall be assessed to any player who delivers a body check with no effort to gain possession of the puck and the blade of the player's stick is above the knees. A minor penalty shall be assessed to any player who delivers a body check to an opponent who is physically engaged for possession of the puck with one or more other players. In all cases, the onus is on the player delivering the check to avoid placing a vulnerable or defenseless opponent in danger of potential injury. Let's move on to general concepts. All major penalties will now carry an automatic game misconduct penalty. Any reference to injury as it relates to penalty assessment has been replaced with recklessly endangers, reckless endangerment, defined as engaging in conduct with regard to the consequences which create a substantial risk of serious physical injury to an opponent. All major and match penalties to be judged on severity of the action and not whether injury results. There are three levels of involvement with the puck that have been established. First, contact with the puck. The last skater or goalkeeper to have touched the puck, a puck touch, this includes a puck that is deflected off a player or any part of their equipment. The second level of involvement with the puck is possession of the puck. This is placing your stick on the puck in an effort to establish control or to deliberately direct the puck with any part of the body. The last player to have intentionally played the puck is considered to have possession of the puck. A player may be in possession of the puck without establishing control of the puck. However, a player must first gain possession of the puck prior to be considered in control of the puck. The third level of involvement with the puck is control of the puck. This is defined as the skater or goalkeeper that in the opinion of the official has possession of the puck and is guiding the puck in any desired direction. Contact with the puck is not considered control of the puck. A player in possession of the puck may also immediately establish control of the puck. A skater is considered to be in control of the puck, is eligible to be body checked and or engage in competitive contact. Another major rule change is that we have reduced the penalties per player in the same game to four penalties per player for the game misconduct to be assessed. Also, the team 15 penalties has been reduced to 12 for that coach to receive a one game suspension. And finally, there has been incorporated a standardized discipline policy for match penalties that establishes guidelines for suspensions and for a player or coach to accept a suspension without a hearing. The exception that had allowed shorthanded teams to ice the puck at the 15 only, 16 and under, and 18 under age classifications has been eliminated. The new rule calls for icing to be called in every instance except at high school, junior, and the adult classification. Also, Immediate offside will be called at all levels of youth hockey. The only levels using delayed or tag up offsides are high school, junior, and the adult classifications. 
Major rule changes. Section 2, Players. Rule 204 and 205 more clearly defines and separates rules pertaining to substitution of players and substitution of goalkeepers. Section 3, Equipment. Rule 301 extends maximum length of stick shaft to 65 inches. Rule 304 removes exception for adults, now calls for immediate stoppage when a helmet is removed. And Rule 304 recommends all players wear a neck laceration protector. Section 4, Penalties. Rule 402, 403, 404, and 405 recommends that penalty length be adjusted based on length of periods played. Rules 403 and 405 removes requirement for adults to place a substitute player on the penalty bench for major or match penalties. They can now place additional player on ice from player's bench when penalty expires. Rule 411 adds progressive suspension for players or coaches who receive their second game misconduct under Rule 601 in the same season. Section 5, Officials. Rule 501 allows for four official system to be used at the 14 and under age classification and above. Section 6, Playing Rules. Rule 601, updated subsections C, D, and E to identify more specific actions and more clearly defined misconduct, game misconduct, and match penalties assessed under this rule. Also in Rule 601, incorporates President's Directive on Hateful Discriminatory Language into Match Penalty Category and removes reference to Offensive Language. More on Rule 601 adds vaping to prohibited actions and changes infraction to a game misconduct for violation of this rule. In Rule 610, Adds note that clarifies a goalkeeper may only freeze the puck while in the act of playing goal. Also added glossary definition. Rule 612B calls for a defending zone faceoff of the penalized team when a penalty is assessed that places time on the penalty clock. Exceptions to this faceoff location would be any action by the non-offending team that actually caused the stoppage of play. Rule 612 calls for attack zone faceoff any time attacking team takes shot on goal and the puck goes out of play off of the post, glass, or the boards. Rule 621 eliminates the slap shot prohibition at the 10 and under age classification and below. Rule 638 provides guidance for management of shootouts when used at the local level. Rule 639 establishes the minimum penalty for slew footing as a major plus a game misconduct. Rule 640 adds note mandating officials strictly enforce contact after the whistle, especially in scrum situations. Also, it adds penalties to be assessed to any goalkeeper who body checks an opponent. Now we will move on to the junior edition rule changes. Generally, it incorporates language from declaration of player safety into glossary definitions and replaces references to injury on penalty determination with recklessly endangers or reckless endangerment. Section 4, Penalties. Rule 404 eliminates gross misconduct 2 penalty category. Rule 409 allows the attacking team to determine location of face-off after a penalty is assessed. Rule 612 calls for attack zone face-off any time attacking team takes shot on goal and puck goes out of play off of the post, glass, or the boards. Rule 613 establishes warning for face-off violation instead of ejection of centers. Rule 624 allows non-offending team to choose face-off location after an icing. Rule 630 allows for play to continue for shot on goal during delayed offside as long as the puck does not enter the goal. To summarize, the information provided in this module is a brief outline of some of the major rule changes. For exact language and a complete understanding of all rule changes, please refer to the Official Playing Rules book. An electronic version of the Official Playing Rules is available on usahockey.com. The mobile rulebook app and hard copies of the Official Playing Rules and Casebook will be available in September of 2021.